We are going to go to our next guest who is going to join us here on our big program. And uh, it is it is kind of an interesting um, topic that we are going to get into. Uh, it, you know, every once in a while, I, I, I like to have uh, various um, opposing, I guess, or not really opposing views, but um, people who... Uh, do things that are kind of outside the box of uh, the the political world because I know there are you know we I, I could have uh, I could have left right center each and every day uh, on this broadcast but uh, every once in a while I I, I like to uh, get into the literary world uh, we have uh, IQ of course with us who is uh, written several books. Uh, the fantastic Don Mazzella, who has written several books and is in the process of trying to get another one uh, out there. Uh, Hello, this is Becky. But we have our next guest with us today, the fantastic Becky Parker Geist joins us today here in our broadcast. She is a fantastic publishing expert, a pro audio voices CEO. And the tides are about to turn for authors thanks to Amplify, which is Amplify Audiobooks, which is an app that looks to be the Netflix to Audible's blockbuster. And uh, we have the fantastic Becky Parker Geist with us today. So, Becky, um, tell me and Don Mazzella and IQ Al Rizzoli a little bit about Pro Audio Voices. Sure, thanks. Uh, so we have been producing audiobooks for, we're just actually coming up on our 10th anniversary and have uh, focused initially on audiobook production, and we still do that, but um, we're really excited to uh, put out the Game Changer Amplify Audiobooks as a platform where authors can finally have a way to succeed with their audiobooks. Uh, it offers a place where they can earn way more royalties uh, than they can earn anywhere else and also have way more control. And That's awesome. I don't know if you, yeah, I, I don't know if, uh, you know, most people don't actually know that much about how that retail model works in the audiobook world. Uh, I'd be happy to share about that and, and how this makes a difference. Yes, like. yes. Talk to us about that. Then I know Don and IQ will have some questions for you. So, yeah, t tell us tell us a little bit more about that. Tell us how that works. Yes. Yeah, so uh, what most people don't realize is that when authors who typically are spending thousands of dollars in addition to many times many years of their lives, you know, creating these uh, audiobooks or writing and then creating the audiobooks, and then they turn them over, you know, just to distribute out into the regular channels. And what most people don't realize is they they basically give up all their control. They don't have any control over what it sells for, being able to run a promotion, being able to do discount codes, or even having any idea who bought their audiobook. So there's no way to like follow <laughs> up amazing. or build community or develop their following. And that is that is just to, like, that is amazing to me that that you know they 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 in all of the tools and all the stuff that we have available, uh, yeah, they 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 don't allow that. But uh, that that was just me interrupting. I apologize. Keep going, my friend. Keep going. Oh no, no, it's no problem. Yeah, and then like when it comes to the financial piece, you know, we think, oh, I'm going to buy this thing, and the author's going to, you know, uh, it's going to support the author as well, but. The truth is that the retailers, um, they take almost all of whatever a customer is spending, and then the authors get this little tiny, like, crumbs off the table. Yeah. It's so little, it's, uh, and it's so wrong. It's, I've always thought, this is just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so we did something about it. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Oh. Uh, can, I, can I jump in here a yeah, minute? Yeah, go ahead, Don. Um, I, I sell a, uh, I, uh, a publisher comes to me and says, uh, I'll give you X dollars for the rights to publish your book and the rights uh, for for the audio and video, et cetera. Now, and the, the publisher then creates an audio book, okay? Uh, what, uh, 
but he, he, the the publisher decides how to how to, uh, how to sell a book and uh, and at what price. Are you saying you, you, uh, the uh, the writer should hold the the audio book rights for themselves and then get, uh, go onto your platform? Am I jumping ahead? No, there's a, uh, I'm glad you brought that up because there's a couple different paths. And if somebody, you know, if there is an audio publisher or a publisher that is saying, yes, I'm going to pay you, I'm going to buy your audio rights, that's certainly a path that is very legit, you know. Um, and, and the fact that they want to buy your audio rights tells you that they believe there is a good market for that audio book. Now, uh, typically, you know, the, the majority of independently published authors don't have that opportunity even. That path, it just isn't open to them. And so they're really up to what they do is they get their audiobook uh, produced with a company like ours, and then they uh, send it out to places like Audible, audiobooks.com. There are lots and lots of different channels, but it's almost impossible not impossible but almost impossible to really succeed financially with that model of distribution because on every single sale for the life of that audiobook the retailers and digital distributors are going to take so much of that pie that it takes a huge volume of sales to be able to have the author come out ahead well, that's true. But uh, let's go to the financials, if I may. Let, let's yeah. say uh, I've I've done a a, a how-to book on uh, building widgets. Okay. Okay. And mm -hmm. um, I come to you and say, I, uh, I'd like you to create an audio book. That yeah. that's one cost. Then, if I, if I'm hearing you correctly, and again, please correct me if I'm wrong. You you now have a way for me to to market uh, uh, market that book directly to to an audience of people interested in building widgets. Am I hearing that correctly? You are hearing that correctly. Yes. So we can produce well, the audio book, and then you have a way to actually distribute the audio book in a, in a way that will help you succeed. Yeah. What what's the way of of uh, uh, succeeding selling uh, uh, your book. Uh, that's the key. It's, it's, it's always been uh, what, what breaks down everything is uh, is getting that book into channels where people know, learn about it and buy it. Uh, how do you right. do it? Yeah, well, um, and yes, there are additional aspects to what we're talking about where you're really identifying your target audience and getting the word out to those people depending on where they are. So that's really uh, m a little more in uh, deeper into the, the marketing realm. And uh, so that, so we have also offerings where we have marketing experts who can help with those questions. Now, when it comes to when you're, let's say you, you find that, oh, my market is, uh, my target market is hanging out on Facebook and that's where I want to, show up and, and engage with those people. Well, whenever you're out there marketing, you're kind of directing traffic. You're basically saying to people, hey, this is the place where I'd like you to get my book or my audio book. When you are out there and directing traffic and you say, go buy my book on Audible, you can pretty much guarantee that even if they go there, you're not going to see much in terms of return, financial return, and you're never going to know who they are. You're not going to have any way to reach out to them again. Whereas, if you are on Amplify Audiobooks, now when you're directing traffic and send them to Amplify Audiobooks, you're going to be able to control your price. And uh, you're going to know who they are. And you're going to get a much bigger piece of each sale. That all okay. Sense? Yes, it does. But are we talking nonfiction or fiction books? All of it. Any any book that is an audio book is that that's what is happening on Amplify Audiobooks. It's a platform 
specifically for audiobooks. And okay. you know, one of the one of the challenges that authors uh, have have had in terms of being able to uh, want to sell audiobooks direct, for example, where that you can earn more, and that's really what this platform creates. But the challenge is that an audiobook, unlike a print book, which is just a physical object, or an ebook, which is a digital object, single object, an audiobook is a collection of files. It's a playlist and a cover image, and they all have to be packaged together. And then in order for a listener to have a good experience, you really need an app for them to listen with. And that's a big... So being able to... So what Amplify Audiobooks does for authors is it creates that vendor platform. It's sort of like the Etsy of audiobooks. You know, where you have your own store awesome. in Amplify Audiobooks, <laughs> and you have all your controls. And then for listeners, they have the app that they can listen to. And when listeners know, when they understand, you know, this really feeds very much into the buy local, buy direct movement and consciousness. When when listeners realize, oh, I want to help the author a whole lot more rather than just you know, putting, pouring more of my money into the pockets of billionaires, they're going to actually support the creators. They're going to make that choice, you know, because we like to have impact. All of us, I yes. think, want to have an impact in the world. You know, so we created a way then for listeners to be able to have an impact with their purchasing dollars. So you have to amass a, a group of, list, of uh, listeners uh, on your app, uh, and then uh, will they indicate that they're interested in Islamic uh, uh, religion, uh, 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 medieval art, etc. And then when someone comes along that has a book on medieval art, you you uh, send out a release or something to them. Am, am I? Is that part of what you're saying? Uh, it is. Uh it's not that particular thing is not something that we're doing yet, but it is something that as the platform grows, uh, I'll, I'll let I'll fill you in on one of the things that we are doing as uh, one of our one of our first things is uh, we're having October is Thriller Month, and so all of our uh, thriller authors have gathered together, not physically, but you know on Zoom, and are working together to cross-promote. So we're building community among the authors as well as uh, helping them expand their reach and at the same time helping each author's following find another uh, author that they also enjoy. And that's mm. good for everyone. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. We have got a great uh, guest with uh, us today. Uh, she joins us live. So Don, go ahead, my friend. No, I was going to I'm Hoggy. I was going to turn over the IQ uh, for his questions, and then come back later. IQ, IQ, IQ Arizola. You got any questions, my friend? Are you with us? I can see IQ. He might be. He might be muted. He might need to unmute himself on the old skip skip. I, I unmuted myself. There we are. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any questions for our guest? <laughs> yeah, here? yeah, yeah. Becky, my. My subject is Islam. I, pr I have three books published on Islam, but they're not selling yeah. very well. Now, mm -hmm. supposing I want to come to you to help me, how do yeah. I do that? Uh, if you are, uh, is it, are your books in audio yet, or are they still? No, uh, not in audio. No, not, no. Not yet. Okay. So then the first thing was we would get on a call, and we would learn more about what your goals are, uh, because that's really important to us. We want to help every author succeed, but we can only succeed if we know what the goal is, right? So it might be Correct. the impact that you want to have, you know, financial, whatever your goals are. And then we look at your manuscripts and give you and talk with you about some different strategies where we can help you uh, move closer and move towards those goals. Once yes. we have your audiobook produced, 
then we use Amplify to help you uh, succeed in getting it out there. Um, one of the things, uh, again, you know, when authors have, uh, when they're trying to market their audiobooks, one of the big challenges is, well, how do I, you know, okay, I can do social media posts, I can do email, but then, you know, I, I can't even tell if I'm succeeding because I, I can't tell who's buying. Yep. Or, you know, I really want, you know, I got this special event. Maybe it's a holiday. Maybe, you know, there's some other uh, special event that I want to do a promotion and have that related. That's a great marketing strategy, but unless, you know, except for Amplify Audiobooks, there are no tools available, so you can't really do it. By the way, just j just for a, a, a quick little heads up here, um, I have uh, forwarded um, our guests' information to IQ and Don Mazzella, so you guys should have it in your email here in a few. But, uh, but so one of the things that I've always wondered, and, and you gave us, by the way, Becky, an amazing rundown at the beginning of this interview on the business of audiobooks which was fascinating uh i i you know what a, a little behind the scenes here that the lovely and talented britannia who is my uh, as everybody says my better half very much my better half um <laughs> as uh, as as someone told me one time without her i would be nowhere uh and uh, anybody that's ever met Brittany knows that, uh, that, that, that she, she, is, she is the straw that stirs the drink, as they say. Um, but one of the things that she started doing years and years ago is she gets in the car and she listens to freaking audiobooks. And she <laughs> listens to these, uh, like, medieval, you know, stories about the dragon with the dragon and all, and all this stuff. Yeah. And uh, all, these, all these, you know... The, the one narrator who's trying to do six different voices and not doing them well. Um, my, <laughs> my question to you, my friend, is yeah. when you were talking about the business of audiobooks, um, how do these actors that are in these, these audiobooks or these narrators for like a, you know, a nonfiction book or whatever, how do these yeah. people get paid? Do they get paid by the publishing company or the, uh, how, how does all that work? Because I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure these, these mofos are getting compensated. <laughs> yes, <laughs> they are getting, yes. And it is usually by, so if they're, if the author or publisher is working with a production company, yes. then it would be the production company, you know, that, that is paying them. Um, and most typically, it is some version of a per-finished hour. So let's say, for example, you know, we have, uh, we have an actor, and he's got, uh, you know, five different characters in this chapter, and he's doing all the voices, and it, he has to go back, and it, maybe it takes him, uh, you know, three hours to do the chapter, but when it's all done and edited, it only is, you know, 30 minutes long. He's going to get paid for 30 minutes of finished time doesn't matter how wow. long it took him to do it. Wow. So, uh, so while, you know... So even these people, actors and these narrators are all getting screwed, basically. <laughs> well, it, it depends, you know. It really depends on, if you know, how efficient you are in the studio and then what, you know, what you're getting, what your rate is for your per-finished hour. So in some ways, it's really good because, now let's say, for example, if it took... You know, if it took somebody who was brand new uh, in in voiceover work, and it and it takes them a long time to do a thing, well, it's not really fair to the author or the producer to charge a whole lot just because it took them a long time. When yes. you might have someone who's really experienced, has really taken the time to develop their skills, and they're really efficient, right? Yeah. So we're, it's uh, it's pretty fair. And and then actors get to know, like, what do I need to charge per finished hour in order to, you know, make my living at what I'm doing? Yeah. Well, what about sometimes authors uh, reading their own books? Yeah, how does that work? Yeah. Because, like, yeah. like, 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 so, like when, uh, mm -hmm. like, like when Bill well, I, I happen or... to have one of the original, uh, um, uh, 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 uh
recordings that he did uh, wow. 50 odd years ago. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, so, and we have a lot of authors who will come to us and say, I, I want to read my own book. And my first question to them is, tell me why you want to read your own book. Because <laughs> uh, sometimes they think, well, because I have to, because I'm the author. Sometimes they think, because uh, it'll be cheaper. And sometimes they just don't know. You know, someone said they should. And here's the thing. Just like with writing or, you know, being a radio host or any other uh, job, you know, there's a certain set of skills that need to be developed to do something well. Yes. And so uh, unless we have an author who maybe they have a theater background or, you know, they have a lot of experience, maybe they're a podcast host, you know, yeah. um, unless there's a really good reason for them to, and if it's their first time that they would be doing this, most of the time I will encourage them to reconsider that thought yeah. because it doesn't necessarily save money. It can often cost more if we, again, think about, well, the professional narrator has lots of experience. They know how to deliver the kinds of files we need. They're not going to be, you know, zhuzhing around in the studio and, you know, making all kinds of noise with their mouth and with their, you know, their clothing such that we have to then have a mess during post-production, just as an example. Yeah. So, yeah, and, uh, you know, you've probably experienced, uh, you know, in, listen in listening to audiobooks, what that difference is when you have an author-narrator who is just mediocre at that. Um, not that the text, you know, that's a whole different thing, you know, but just the reading, the performance aspect versus someone who actually is really good at it. Yeah. And there are both. So it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's something to be explored, but I, I encourage authors to not make an assumption that they should be the one to read it. That's but awesome. what are we talking about to, to do a 250-page book um, uh, 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 to produce a, a finished product? What's yeah. the price range? Yeah, what 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 is something yeah. like that? Because that's that seems to be kind of mm -hmm. the standard book, you know, anymore. Yeah. What what is something like yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah, um, we base everything uh, on word count. So, I have a harder time when it's like a page number cuz I'm how always about, thinking how word about 77,000 how about 77,000 words? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So <laughs> <laughs> there are going to be a, a lot of variables, but, you know, you you probably would be looking at somewhere between, you know, three and six thousand yeah. dollars. It's going to depend a lot mm. on many. There's so many different factors. Yeah. And and that's why when well, we're congratulations, I want to congratulate you. You're the first person to honestly say what it costs. <laughs> that I've talked to about that. Congratulations. Yeah. I'm, uh, I mean that as a compliment. I really mean it. Yeah. Yeah. When, one of the reasons that we, uh, we work with, uh, with authors the way that we do in terms of we start out learning about their goals, and then we look at their manuscript, and we come back to them with ideas about how to, they can leverage that manuscript to be you know, the, the best tool to help them achieve their goals, and and this is before we are doing anything, you know, asking for any financial, you know, uh, anything from them. We want authors to succeed, and uh, there's so much that that people uh, can learn, or there are so many opportunities that that no one talks mm. about. Yep. Uh, and yet, you know, we want them to know, like. You could mm -hmm. do this thing. Like if you have, let's we're going to call a... you next week. I can do it <laughs> this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I am being categorical because if you talk to audio about doing a book, you, yeah. they'll, 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 they'll give you all the song and dance, and then, and then draw you in before they'll give you an answer. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, we're exploring right now. When, to, uh, when and how to do an audio book. That, that's why I asked the questions. 
And, and that's why I say, you said that's one of the, and it may cost a little bit more, but who cares? Yeah. At least you give it as a ballpark. Right, IQ? Right. right. Yeah, IQ Al Rizzoli. You're, 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 you're yeah, right yeah, there, see, my I'll friend. See. I'll tell you the truth. I'll tell you why. Uh, I have uh, the publishing company I was with for 14 years now. It's nothing to do with audio, only publishing. Legally, can I come to you to do the audio? Yeah. Ah, yes, fantastic. if you have audio okay. rights, yes, absolutely. That's well, awesome. I never signed audio rights, as far as I remember. Because there was no audio at the time 14 years ago. Ah, uh, yes, I see what you're saying. Uh, yes, you you should, if they have not explicitly claimed audio rights, then you have them. That's awesome. Now, I'm not an attorney. I should just, like, say I am not an IT <laughs> yes, attorney. Yes. So, no, 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 no. You're, 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 you're good. We're, we're just, you know, a, a, a lot of this <laughs> is, you know, we we have a lot of people that we've interviewed in the past who are authors. We've also interviewed a lot of people who have audio books. And, uh, you know, Don and IQ both have books. And, you know, yeah. we're, we're just kind of ballparking it today. You know, the, the, the best thing yeah. – to do is is to get in touch with Becky. Speaking of that, how do we do that? If there is an author or someone that is sitting in our audience uh, that is you know listening to the conversation or they're watching the video here on uh, Twitch or any of the places we are, how do they get in touch with you? What what, what is the best yes. place to do? Yeah, right. The, uh, the best website is proaudiovoices.com. Fantastic. And you can email. Best email would be admin at proaudiovoices.com. That's awesome. And Jen, that could you say that this? Yes. I, 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 I went ahead and, and I've already sent an email to both of you guys. You guys should have her phone number and email. So uh, <laughs> without, a, without a doubt, by next week, I'll be sending you some documents. That's great. And my phone number is also on the website. You know, I have. I, I like talking to people. I like helping people, so mm. I make myself available. That's awesome. That's, so you know, that's a brave person to put their <laughs> telephone number on the website. <laughs> I know, I know, it is. There's there have been a couple occasions where I've regretted it, but you know what? Overall, <laughs> it's worth it. <laughs> that's uh, awesome. look, can we back up a minute? And ask, yes. How did ahead. you get into this business? Oh yeah. Well, I I got my MFA in acting. Um, and my, one of my first jobs out of grad school was back in 81 was doing, uh, talking books for the blind with library That's awesome. of Congress. That's awesome. And, ah, oh, oh my God, I just fell in love with audiobooks. Uh, yeah. So it's, and that's back when it was real to real tapes, you know? <laughs> well, that's, a, that's even more sure. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> real to real, baby. Wanna, uh, wanna, uh, what if someone wanted to be a voice? How, how do they contact you, and what do you look for in a voice for your books? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, on the website, under the contact us, there is a place to apply for the narrator team. And what we're, what we're looking for or listening for are two things mainly. One is making sure that the, the studio that they're working in has good quality because that matters. Yes. And the second is their storytelling ability. So we want to hear, well, how, you know, read to us, you know, so we know what that sounds like. We, um, some people who are not very skilled and won't make it into our talent bank are those that maybe are so new that they sound really stilted when they're reading or don't really know how to phrase a sentence in a way that it makes sense. Um, but, uh, yeah, just, be good at, and when I say storytelling, for me, that also refers to nonfiction because, you know, even though we're communicating, conveying information, it's still in a narrative. It's still a story. That's awesome. But, but is the voice required to follow the, 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 uh, the book or uh, does yes. the voice have the ability to uh, uh, smooth out? Uh, dialogue yeah. so or it is yeah it is the uh, the the job is to read verbatim uh, although I will say this in almost every book I've come across 
uh, when it gets into the audiobook production process, we typically find typos, and so those can be fixed. Um, and we usually alert the author, oh, hey, we found this thing. Um, but now, if an author is narrating their own book, then they have free reign. <laughs> so mm -hmm. if they want to change something, they can. If they want to add an anecdote, they can, because it, it's their work. Hmm. But, you know, uh, the, the most critical part of writing is, is dialogue. And, uh, yeah. and uh, what, what I've seen is very few people can replicate uh, the author's dialogue uh, except the author. Um, the, the one or two author books, I, I'm scared. Go ahead, you're a guest. Yeah, yeah. Go, go, go ahead, my friend. Yeah, so... Um... So usually, like with uh, with dialogue, um, I'll, I'll there's like one caution flag I would give, and that is, and this is true on just the narrative voice or any dialogue voices, is that it's almost never going to sound like it does in your head as the author. So, but if you can allow that, sort of let ease up on the expectation that it will sound like it does in your head and uh, be open to what the actors are bringing to the process, what they are picking up from your writing and the storytelling, uh, and even from conversations that they may have with you, because that's one of the things we also do is we, uh, we connect, uh, we do a call with our author and narrator so that they can, you know, talk with each other. Um, so, but in terms of the like a professional actor doing dialogue, um, they're usually extremely skilled at that, and uh, uh, and while some are better at differentiating those voices than others, you know, in the casting process is when you're really listening for uh, the best option for your voices. Yes. Yeah. Well, for, for instance, if you have dialogue between a man and a woman, uh, you, uh, you, usually it's just one narrator. Do you ever use it where you have two, uh, ma ma a man and a woman, doing a dialogue? Yeah, we do. Uh, one of my favorite kinds of projects is actually full cast projects, you know, where you have a, a big cast of uh, the size, depends on the book, of course, um, where and those typically then will also you know have maybe some music maybe original music uh, sound effects and they're really treated more like a full-on drama there are other books where you use multiple voices uh sometimes it might just be point of view like if you have chapters from different points of view you might do it that way you can also do and they call it a duet in romances where you have that back and forth dialogue with with voices it's not common in non-romances it is certainly possible um but you just kind of when i look at a manuscript and i have that question in front of me in other words you know it has been suggested that oh maybe we would like to use more than one voice i'll look at it with that an eye to does that really make sense or or Will it be distracting for the listener? Hmm. And sometimes it can be more distracting for the listener because of the, um, you know, some of it's the he, sh he said, she said, the attributions, um, you know, but that, that's something that, yes, it can be done, and whether it's the best fit for any particular manuscript is completely um, depends on the specific manuscript. I'm, I'm going to defer to IQ now, but I'm going to have to tell you, you and I are going to have, uh, with your permission, a conversation. I'd love to I'm talk further. Forward. Yeah. Uh, yeah but yeah. IQ, please. Yeah, go ahead and jump in there, IQ. What, what, what do you have for us? Wrap us up here with Becky Parker Geist. I'm hoping to have the same conversation that you will have with her. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I, I, Becky, I, I, I think you sold sold your services to, uh, to, to, to our panelists and our co-hosts, uh, w- w- which is amazing. I, I, I love when the guest comes on and they're trying to sell their trying to sell their wares to the general public, and they end up selling the boys on their services. So, uh, congratulations! That was great. That was great. <laughs> Okay. It was really uh, 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 like a flash of lightning opening mm. the sky. I like it. I like the Beautiful. idea because I'm uh, I'm not getting very much return on my publishing at the moment. Mm. Yeah. Thought- Having read IQ's bo- book, I, I will tell you, it really does uh, <clears throat> cry for a narrative. Yeah. Ah, good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It Thank is- you. Thank well, you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm looking looking forward to talking with both of you. Awesome. So, uh, so, so, Becky, uh, before we let you go, what do you have coming yeah. up, and uh, where can we get involved with what you're doing online? Yeah. Well, uh, Amplify Audiobooks is our that's our big exciting thing. Uh, we're as I mentioned, uh, we're doing a thriller month in October. Um, what I would ask uh, uh, you and, and your listeners is uh, just start by downloading the app. You know, even that uh, helps us. And, uh, and then coming to the website and looking, you can also go to amplifyaudiobooks.com. That takes you straight to the store where you can see what titles are there now. That is awesome. Well, you are amazing. This has been definitely a... Uh a uh, fantastic conversation about the uh the business of uh pro audio when it comes to narration and uh all the various stuff with audio books i've learned a heck of a lot today i know that they have learned a heck of a lot today and uh we have been chatting today with the fantastic Becky Parker Geis. She is the founder and CEO of Pro Audio Voices, which is a Portland-based company serving clients internationally as a go-to place for exceptional audiobook production, marketing, and the producer of Amplify Audiobooks, which offers the highest royalties and the most control of authors' audiobooks on any platforms in the industry. She also has a debut novel, which we will definitely have to have you back to uh, discuss uh, the left turn, uh, because uh, we, we we were so busy uh, putting over your 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 audio services and, t- <laughs> and talk, talking about the world of uh, narration that uh, we completely missed the book. But we definitely want to get you back. Uh, you've got my email. Your PR people have my email. Uh, let us know, and I know that uh, the fabulous Don Mazella and the always trusted IQ Alvarezoli would love to talk to you about your book, my friend. Beautiful. I would love it. Thank well, you. before we let everybody okay. go, let's start with IQ. IQ, how do we get your books and get involved with what you're doing online, my friend? Well, my books are on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Lifting the Veil, the True Faces of Muhammad and Islam. Otherwise, I refer to Don to continue. Yes, Don, what, what do you got for us, my man? Uh, you know, 2sbdigest.com. Uh, hashtag 2SB uh, Digest, and of course the National Robotics Education Foundation, the-nref.org, and uh, 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 a step closer to, to getting the book published. So have a great day. That is awesome. Well, Becky, thanks for doing this. Don, IQ, we will talk to you guys next week. And uh, it's been a fabulous show. And uh, Becky, thanks for joining us, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Appreciate it. There she goes. The fantastic Becky Parker Geist with us today. She joins us live here on our big broadcast, and you can get a hold of us online over there at J-I-G-G-Y-G-U-A-R.com. That is the best spot to see what we are up to over there, and uh, you can also find us each and every day over there at JiggyJaguar.com. Yes. Uh, On-demand archived audio, as I like to say. Uh, that is the best place to go see what we are doing and uh, what we are up to. And uh, thanks for joining us. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day. There is a lot of things that you could be doing with your time. Uh, you know, putting up blinds in an empty apartment. Um, you know, uh, taking taking a uh, taking a uh, uh, stray cat's uh, water bowl on the front porch and uh, th- th- throwing the water uh, in the yard and wasting resources. 
Um, you know, there's lots of things you could be doing, but uh, I appreciate you for uh, being with us, and uh, we will see you next time. As a wise man once said, see you a while ago. You are listening to the big broadcast. <laughs>